We believe that we can get somebody to a game and we, we capture them for that three hour period. That's when we really owned it. I want my fans when they're in the office, when they're with their friends, talking about my team, like it's their team. We were edging it. So anything we were doing was going to be different. So even our opening night, our opening night, we had everyone from heavyweight champ Riddick Bowe to Mr. Hockey Gordy Howe. We had Michael Buffer, who coined, you know, the phrase, let's get ready to rumble for boxing. He was our PA announcer for the night. So we set the tone that expect the unexpected when you come to a crunch game. At some point, I realized that I enjoyed making news more than covering it. So I wanted to make the transition into PR. And I had a, had reached out to a gentleman named Alan Taylor, sent him my resume, got a response that there were no jobs available and you know, didn't think anything twice about it. And about four months later, one of my editors approached me and he said, listen, I know you love boxing. Uh, there's a PR firm Alan Taylor, who's looking for somebody to help work PR for the Sugar Ray Leonard, Thomas Hearns fight in Las Vegas. This is back in 1981. Well, the editor had no idea that I had applied for a job with Alan. It was just ironic. But he thought about me. I went in and I wound up taking a leave of absence from the AP and traveled to Traverse City, Michigan to work Thomas Hearns' training camp for about six weeks. And from there, I went to Vegas, worked the fight, and then I was prepared to go back to the AP. And then Alan said, hey, we just got hired to promote the Caesars Palace Grand Prix in Vegas. Uh, you'll be working out of our New York office, but we'd like to keep you. And I said, well, would it be a full-time job? He said, I can't guarantee you full-time. It'll be certainly for the race, which will last through, I think it was September, would last through November. Well, I knew that if I took, a no I couldn't take another leave of absence. So it was, do I take a leap of faith that I'm going to do a good enough job that if and when he's got an opening, he's going to bring me aboard full-time? Or do I turn it down and maybe never get another chance? And you know, I, I felt pretty confident. I love what I was doing. So I left the AP, went with Alan, and luckily about 10 days into that assignment, he brought me on full time. And about three years later, we became partners in the business. So in 2010, we we're the first team in the American Hockey League to put an outdoor game on. We did it at the State Fairgrounds. We did close to 21,000 people. And, and we just didn't do a game. So how do we do it different? We brought in, we brought in, you know, former NHL and uh, our players, you know, and, and, and the star players. We brought in Stanley Cup champions. We, we had a uh, Senator Schumer at the game. We had a puck from an outdoor game in Las Vegas. And we had it. We had a skydiver fly it in and land it the right before the game. And people, we didn't promote we were doing it. So all of a sudden, music goes on, and people look it up, and there's a guy dropping to send the rice. We wanted them to have that experience. We all weren't around when there was a basketball team called the Nationals. Not playing in Syracuse. Right. They were in the NBA, yep. believe it or not, in a small market. And they won a national championship. I believe it was in 1951. And what did they get for winning? Now, nowadays, you win a championship, uh -huh. you get this big trophy, right? And you get accolades and everything. 
they got an ice bucket, literally an ice bucket. So at the time, I think there were five or six living members mm -hmm. of that team. They're all in their 80s. The most famous one was a player named Dolph Shays, who was, a, uh, was, was ranked one of the 50 greatest NBA players of all time. It, it, it probably the, maybe the greatest athlete in Syracuse ever. This writer at the time, Sean Kirst, started talking to me about it, and he said, "You know, they're all older now. You know, they were never really honored. What do you think?" And we put our brains together, and we wound up bringing in, I think, but only one of the living members couldn't make it physically. And we had, I think, five of the six. One came from Florida. One came from uh, Binghamton. I think one came from Philadelphia. And we had this video done. We had the players escorted. Our players escort these uh -huh. older gentlemen onto Santa Rice. We had a pack crowd. We had found the uh the actual court where they played on was being stored right. in our building because they played in our building you know was 60 years prior so we had pieces of the court broken up and framed and we presented it to each of them at center rice but that wasn't it so we had a secret that we did mm -hmm. that we nobody knew only three people knew about it myself jim sarosi and I think Megan, we had gone out and we had made up ring, championship rings for them that they never got. And here we are giving them these rings and seeing these old men cry. And to me, that's, that was one of the most special nights. It had nothing to do with hockey. It had, it had to do with giving back to these gentlemen, these men, and the team that they represented that had given so much to the market mm -hmm. so long ago. And I think as a, as, as a team, you have a platform and you have an obligation to give back because you're high profile and it need not always be financially. Now the ring cost, whatever it costs, but it's, it's, it's using your platform to do things that make your community better. It has been the most enjoyable business relationship of my life because it's really one organization from, from the owner, Jeff Finnick, to the president, Steve Griggs, to the GM, Julian Brizois, to their coaches, their players, it, it, and just the way they, they treat us it's one family, it, you know, and we are really the envy of every American League team because they all really wish they had this kind of relationship. We're, we're in constant contact. Uh, watching the Stanley Cup playoffs last year, it was like I was watching my kids playing. The emotion. I, I, I was literally drained. And I'll tell you a funny story. So... I grew up a Ranger fan, right? I had Ranger season tickets in New York. And a couple of years ago, the Rangers were playing the Lightning in the playoffs. And I was in New York at the time, and we were out with maybe four other couples, you know, buddies of mine and their wives. And in, at, in the restaurant, there was the Ranger Lightning game was on. And all five of us were big sports fans. And they were all Ranger fans. They knew I owned the Crunch and the Lightning were my partners. But they couldn't understand how I was rooting for the Lightning. I said, you grew up a Ranger fan. You're just business partners. I'm like, let me try to give you an analogy. And it kind of hit me right away. So I've got five kids, right? And I remember when I had my first, before I had my kids, I had my nephew, right? 
But I love my nephew. I mean, went to his baseball games and everything. But when I had my kids, I still love my nephew, but my kids always came first, right? And I said, don't, I said to my friends, the lightning on my kids, uh-huh. <laughs> the ranges on my nephews, right? I mean, those are kids that I saw them every day in a locker room. I talked to them. How, how's everything going? How you feeling? Got to know them. I said, it's hard for you to, I said to them, it's hard for you to understand that. I said, the Rangers are great, but the Rangers, they don't really care about me, right? I mean, I'm a fan. The Lightning, they care about me. And so watching, when I was watching the Stanley Cup Finals and the last game, the, the last period, my phone, the, the text I was getting from friends around the country was, it was literally, like I couldn't even watch it. I couldn't look at the phone because I was watching the game. It was only during the break. And they were so excited about those kids that played for the Crunch about to win the Stanley Cup. You know, I go to Tampa. It's about a three and a half hour drive. So normally in normal times, I go up every four or five weeks. I drive up, go to a game and uh, spend the night and drive home. I always see, I always sit with the team president in, in, a, in a suite. The people who run the suite, they know me and they're always asking about the crunch. The, the ushers in the suite area start talking about players with the crunch. It's, it's, it's just so amazing. And it, 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 it's, it's special and it just makes everything so much better. And when we finally win the Calder Cup, and it's going to happen. It, it, winning it with Tampa is going to mean, uh-huh. I, 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 you know, I, I, it, it's, it's to say, to say I'm speechless. You're, 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 you're hearing it or not hearing it. it it's, yeah. yeah. You know, I, 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 I can't wait. 